Next up, we have something from Lei Chi. Thank you very much, Lei. He's from Malaysia, Penang in Malaysia. Don't forget to look at the Malaysian stamps again. Okay, not a problem. Lovely birds, fruit and flowers. Beautiful. All right, this one is a uh, rather large-ish box. Oh, I thought there was a uh, gap along there. No, there we go, along the front here. So this could be anything. I have no idea. Hey, oh, HP, HP. Serial port. See, serial port. No, it's not. Sure, it's a SATA power cab. No. Sure, it will be something else entirely. Hi Dave, thank you very much for an interesting EEV blog. As I mentioned earlier in the forum, I'm going to send you a handheld pulse generator for your review. The reason I built this handheld pulse generator is allowing me to perform do-it-yourself passive probe. Yep, um, another reason allowing me to verify the bandwidth and step response of my probing system. Of course, we've done some videos on that and a few people have sent some stuff in. Uh, when I hook up the pulse generator, blah, yep, the rise and fall time, 0.35, on, uh, that's for a Gaussian uh, response bandwidth. Um, it generates 1.4 nanosecond rise time. Four time is a bit slower at 1.9. With this, you can verify up to 250 megahertz. So, yeah, it's not particularly quick. It's not like the Jim Williams uh, pulse generator that uh, is in the order of, you know, 300 picoseconds or something like that. But thank you very much, Lei Chi. Happy mailbag day. Woo! -hoo. Let's have a look. And we have a most excellent uh, 50 ohm, 2 watt uh, dummy load, uh, DC to 1 gig. Fantastic. And he's also included uh, two signal conditioning kits from Pulse uh, Research Labs. I hope you can use them. So, excellent there. Looks like this just comes off here. Is there anything in them? No. Okay, they're just a uh, they're just a blank uh, board, which then you can um, you know uh, do your own roll your own uh, filters and stuff like that. So that's they're very handy. That's really nicely uh, engineered. I rather like that. Wonder how much they cost. And there you go. Here's these signal conditioning kits, and uh, up to terminations up to five gig. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, these it it feels like it's that sort of quality. Ah, oh, that's it for the uh, SMA ones, or three gig for the BNC uh, version, which we've got. Depending on PCB, uh, depending on the substrate they're using, I guess. And on the back here is a neat little uh, uh, sample applications. DC blocking, of course. You can just put the AC coupling cap in there. Um, AC block, which just has a uh, choke in the middle, uh, series termination, shunt termination configuration, precise shunt termination, uh, feed through decoupling cap, diode detector, attenuator, low pass filter, high pass filter. Beautiful. And here it is. Don't turn it on, take it apart. No worries, we will take it apart. Overshoot 3.574%, uh, pre shoot 1.121%, getting pretty precise there. <laughs> Cycle jitter, less than 600 picoseconds. Uh, peak to peak. Ah, oh, look at this. Man, it's got everything on there. And it's the L7101 pulse generator. Fantastic. There's a uh, nice BNC. We've got some uh, test points on there. Not sure what the uh, yeah, dip switch is. Uh, it's a, right, it's a, it's actually a pulse generator. As you can set it with the uh, dip switches. 1 kilohertz, 10 megahertz, logic 0 or 1. Excellent. I like that. Battery included. Please connect before use. There you go, uses a standard uh, 9 volt. Uh, it takes about 70 milliamps, that's actually, a, that's a lot from a uh, 9 volt battery, but uh, patent pending. <laughs> really? Handmade, handmade in Malaysia. That's a nice case. I really uh, quite like that. That is neat. So, there's our battery. Yeah, that's really nice, big, thick screws on there. Let's take this sucker apart. Ta-da! There we go. Look at that. Neatly designed. <laughs> It's even fused. Beautiful. And we have a little bit of uh, bodginess happening here on the board. Eh, a few little last minute changes, but uh, yeah, that's actually uh, quite neat. That is uh, well designed into that case. I really like that. And if we have a look at Lay's schematic here, as you can see, there's uh, not much to it at all. We've just got some uh, output filtering down here. We've got a 74 HC. Uh, 4851, we're going to send HC390, uh, two 390s there, and uh, not much else to it. As far as the uh, power supply section goes, it's got a uh, soft power on switch here, and uh, looks like there's a uh, low battery detect 
circuit and a um, virtual ground with an op amp there just generating the virtual ground in the middle getting the uh, positive and negative rails and he's using an OPA 875 uh, mux there to drive the output directly from that so it just looks like it just chooses between uh, the uh, reference and ground and that's it and I haven't uh, decoded this one at all in terms of the uh, uh, actual operation of this, but there seems to be uh, shenanigans going on here with the um, HC390 flip-flops to generate the uh, pulses required, hence the uh, R's and C's in there. So let's give this thing a go. I've got it uh, directly connected into a coupler. Of course this is a uh, 50 ohm capable uh, scope, so the input is set to uh, 50 ohms input impedance and uh, we'll give that well, we'll give that a go. Press our button. Ta-da! And the rise time there, pretty much uh, bang on to what he said, 1.4 odd nanoseconds. There you go. And the fall time there, yeah, around about 2 nanoseconds. He said about 1.9, but yep, close enough. Now the thing is, it's um, just a square wave. Um, so I don't know what all those uh, shenanigans were going on with the R's and C's around the uh, flip-flops, the HC390s. Uh, not sure what's going on there at all. I expected it to like generate a... Uh, a shorter pulse or something like that with a different uh, duty cycle but no anyway that's the 10 megahertz option whoop just switched off it's got auto switch off uh, mode on the switch there it only goes for about 20 seconds or so so that was the 10 megahertz waveform this is the 1 kilohertz uh, waveform and same duty cycle 50% duty cycle and uh, if we go in and uh, have a look at the rise time yeah there it is the same 1.4 odd nanoseconds and the fall time there, yeah, around 1.9 to 2 nanoseconds. Same as the 10 megahertz waveform. Now I'm using what uh, Lay calls the uh, logic high output level, and the thing just switched off, and it looks like it's, uh, I don't know, designed to generate a single pulse or something like that, so I think his terminology might be a bit wrong, but check out, as it's decayed like this, check out the weirdness which is happening as the, uh, as the power supply voltage discharges. Really quite neat. So if we trigger on the positive going edge here, I'm going to push the button and uh, see what we get. There we go. We just get a single edge, which, oh, that does not look clean at all. That's very nasty. So I'm not sure what mode that thing's actually, uh, what that's actually designed to do. It's a bit weird. And there's that uh, same decay you saw before over time, that same weirdness happening as the voltage drops and finally decays and then drops off right at the end there. <laughs> Neat. It's fascinating the effects you can get with, uh, you know, when power supplies do weird stuff and you wonder why your circuits do weird stuff when your power supply does weird stuff. Pfft, check that out. Try and model that on your bloody simulator and see what you get, huh? So here we go. I've managed to capture this thing on the, what Lay calls the logic low mode and, uh, I, you know, look, it, it's attempting to generate pulses there, but look at that. I mean, you know, yeah, we might be getting a, uh, a falling edge there. Um, sorry, I haven't sampled that properly. It's all over the shop, of course, due to all those um, RCs doing stuff. But there you go. Look, we're generating, look, it looks like we're generating a sharp positive edge there and then a... Yeah, so like a sharp, an alternating sharp positive edge and then a sharp negative edge. Um, in that case, I guess it's kind of rather clever. But uh, yeah, I just don't sort of understand the benefit of that at all. I've sampled that a bit better and well, the falling edge there is, you know, is, is hopeless. I mean, we're talking, you know, 3.8 microseconds. So I'm not sure what's actually, what's going on there at all. The... Uh, the uh, rising edge there is reasonably quick, but yeah, I don't see what mode that is at all. Lay, please explain. But on the regular uh, signal generation mode, that really does give a nice response. You can see there's very little overshoot, and there's very little pre-shoot there at all, very little overshoot. I mean, this is only, only a 500 megahertz bandwidth um, scope, but you know, that's, that's pretty good. I like it. Next up, we have something from France, from Thomas Salandi. I'm sure it's not Salandi Thomas. Oh, it could be. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the uh, 
if that's normal to put your last name first on something like this, but uh, this is a rather interesting box. I like this. Um, there you go. There's a French stamp. Not really. It's not even a stamp. No, it's just printed on there. Pfft, hopeless. Loser. All right. One old mobile phone. Whoa. There we go. Must be a bloody big mobile phone, of course. The uh, Motorola one we uh, tore down ages ago. There you go, Thomas Salandi. Thanks, Thomas. He's a geek and a photographer, or a geek photographer. And sarfata.org, however you pronounce that. I'm sure I've got it wrong. Anyway, and he's from Paris. Dave, I can't thank you enough for everything you taught me in your videos and of the fun I had listening to the amp hour with Chris. Hi, Chris. This was uh, my very first mobile phone. It was pretty old when I got it. it required full-size SIM card. and made me feel very important every time I pulled the antenna. Hope you enjoy taking it apart. All the best, Thomas. Thank you very much. Let's look at what Thomas's first... Oh, my good. Oh, right, that's the... <laughs> oh, it's the MicroTac. There you go. It's the... Uh... Oh, yes, folks. Oh, state of the art. Has it got that old electronic smell? Hang on. Oh yeah. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? Look at that. Ah, oh, state of the art technology. Ah, oh, pull the antenna up. Ah, oh, you're a big shot, you know, Wall Street broker or something like that with your mic Motorola MicroTac mobile phone. Were they, I don't, were they even called mobile phones back then? I wonder when that term actually started. I don't know. I have a vague recollection that they weren't actually called mobile phones then. They were called uh, portable phones or, well, cell phones in the US, um, something like that. So I'm not sure when that terminology came along, but there's the uh, charging station for it. I wonder if it uses nickel metal hydride. Probably. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, well, NICAD or nickel metal hydride. So let's whip that off. Let's have a look. Doesn't tell you. Bummer. But, uh, yeah, I'm guessing that would be uh, Nikad or nickel metal uh, hydride, probably. And there it is. It's the Motorola 7200 MicroTac, made in Germany. Well, as it turns out, this thing's actually uh, fairly recent. It's uh, 1994 vintage. So, well, it's almost uh, 20 years old still, though. But it's uh, not one of those analog ones from the 90s. This is a digital uh, 900 megahertz GSM model. So it's actually far from the uh, analog bricks that we had back in the day. And if we have a look at the uh, weight of this thing, what does it weigh? Let's have a look. 250 grams, quarter of a kilo. Ah, it's not too bad. So thank you very much, Thomas. That will be the recipient of a teardown Tuesday. Come into a video blog near you. The uh, charge is interesting too. It just slot well. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fail. It does slot in there like that, and it has another slot down in there, uh, presumably to charge a spare battery. Or at least uh, that's the plan, I suspect. There we go. Yeah, that's the idea. You whack the battery in there, and you can whack your phone in the front. Or you can whack two batteries in there like that. It's actually rather neat and modular. You can charge, looks like you can probably charge two batteries at a time, um, as well as having that third one ready to go on your phone. I wonder what the uh, battery life on this sucker was. And just to even it out, we've got one from JP in Willoughby here in New South Wales, Australia. Not Austria. Let's check it out. Paid a whopping $8.65 to post it. Thank you very much, JP. Wonder what it is. Doesn't actually say because there's no, you know, no need for customs uh, forms, of course. When you're sending stuff internally. So let's keep it open. Mystery. Ooh, hey, it's a can of something. Oh, look, check it out. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, it's, we've got some flux in here. Uh, sorry, some uh, solder. Yeah, oh, look at this flux gel. There we go, flux scene. PCB cleaning solvent, awesome, complete with a little brush there, and nozzle, and we've got some flux gel, brilliant, from um, AIM Solder, 
and there's no, yes there is, there's a letter. Hi Dave, I'm glad that you do like the probes. Ah, of course, George is the one who uh, sent me those um, sexy little probes. In regards to the soldering video, please try out these two products. Been using them for years and they work well. Yes, on the smart board I'll apply the flux, flux gel around the chip and blow hot air from your ATN hot air station until the flux gel starts to boil and solder melts down. That will trim the solder joints. Yeah, it'd probably uh, work a treat, I'm sure. After this, let it naturally cool down and clean with the Electrolube FLU. Now you should see a nice factory looking solder work. I'm also using it for hand soldering and it works great. Yes, I have no doubt. Thank you very much, George. Yeah, I don't have any of this um, gel type uh, flux. I've only got like the flux uh, pen. I've used this uh, sort of stuff at uh, work before, but I've never actually had any at home. And I've actually used this before as well, this uh, flux clean stuff from Electrolube. Um, they make, you know, a ton of stuff. And uh, here's the stuff I actually have in the lab here. It's a more general purpose electronic uh, cleaning solvent. Once again, from Electrolube in the familiar uh, package with the big E. But this is just um, isopropanol uh, alcohol. What's the percentage? Uh, yeah, you know, 99.7% pure, um, pure isopropanol alcohol. So it's different to this fluxine stuff, I believe, which is, let's have a look. Does it tell you? A rapidly drying blend of solvents for removing contaminants from printed circuit boards and flux residues after soldering. Test spore area before using on plastics. Well, you know, a lot of your components um, on your board are going to have plastic packaging. There you go. It uh, doesn't actually tell you what's in it. Hmm. Nope, there's no information on that at all. It's just got a blend of solvents. <coughs> yeah. Well, anyway, um, thank you very much, George. I will uh, definitely use these two uh, next time I do a soldering video.